<laughs> yeah. I think they'd be really interested in talking about it. They kind of have made the conclusion that for the general public to be working with XNPP, no, you know, the average young web developer or inexperienced web developer isn't going to run an XNPP. Well, I mean, I kind of noticed that over the last three years. <laughs> I mean, I, I became an XMPP like, I'm fanboy. A running one, right? So yeah. I prefer to do. So you don't have to run XMPP servers and XMPP clients to use the stuff. Um, like with Bosch, you can connect to anything that's already out there. So, for instance, we have a, a thing called Speak, which is like a chat room, and you can log in with your Google, uh, your Gmail account, and use the Google Talks. I mean, there's no setup required. But that's for IM. That's not for like websites, website communication, or, or just totally arbitrary. It's, it's, it's just really great to be able to just so put it in call and have it work. In, in um, XMPP, yeah. so you can log in with no credentials. Uh, I'm talking about the difficulty of the protocol. Like I have Django and Apache, and I want to do some PubSub. That's that's what I've got. Like uh, I can write PubSub apps in yeah. with <coughs> static files, it's just JavaScript code. As long as there exists some server out there that will do SASL nodes, then you can do whatever you want. That's why. Uh, I think there's a misconception that there has to be an entire stack of stuff to enable. No, when, you, when you say, say I can do PubSub with, do you mean ZEP0060 with Bosch as the transport? Sure. So there's a JavaScript library called Stroke that I wrote, and you just write XMPP stuff and then handlers okay. to JavaScript. Cool. And you can connect to um, the, the, the JavaScript security thing means that you have to proxy some Bosch URL. Okay. So I mean, I'll, I'll admit I'm a little bit reserved about. Um, Zep 0060, because I mean, I wrote a Jabber server, and I mean, just the XMPP spec is like pfft, over like two different volumes, and then no one implements it correctly. Like three, four years later, I'm still getting bug reports on mailing lists about two servers negotiating something. And I go look at the spec, and the spec is like ambiguous about something, and everyone gets it wrong. And so I'm like, okay, great. So let's say someone managed to implement a server enough to be kind of limping along, talking to each other. And I mean, this is ignoring transport, TCP or HTTP, whatever. People can't understand like the you know semantics of the the damn spec. And then we have Zep 060, which is like ten times longer than the core baseline spec. And I'm like, really? What are the odds of anyone getting that right? Maybe it's better, but I mean, that that yeah, thing just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think we're gonna have to prove with examples. Uh, but but it's, these aren't mutually exclusive. That's the other thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, like, no, no, I, I so, think we're saying the same thing. Yeah. Is that this is going to be a good. Uh, like a little polite gauntlet across the face that says, okay, this is this easy to implement. Now we have to prove that stroke and Okay, I mean, but don't view this as adversarial. Like, no, no, I mean, no, no, I, no. I, I, I am an XMPP fanboy. I just. Yeah, and the other thing is, like, just if I may chill for my player for a little while. Um, so I work on App Engine, and, uh, you know, we just announced our roadmap. We have X. <laughs> yeah, shilling. So, shill. Uh, we've got XMPP support in our in our roadmap now. So, yeah, I mean, we were at, I was really yeah it's really cool. Yeah. So people are really excited about it. Yeah, but you subscribe to some pumps of node on the network and you get it. Right, but, the but to do what they're doing, you'd have to have an open connection between the client and the server. Like it's async in the sense that like I can say I want I want to know whenever this Ooh. event happens and then I can right. just Bosch is only it. long polling? As opposed to what? It's Get, getting a new it's connection like, back. Like a, it's, yeah. it's, so, you can do it. It's all it's stream, stream, too. You, you, can, you can do it. No, no, the, the, the point is, you still have to do long polling to be able to get it. No. 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 no, you get another callback back. Yeah, it's all callbacks. How do you get it into the browser? Well, into the browser, I mean, you don't even oh, have to do it. Well, then see, that's I'm talking about server to server. OK, I'm talking about you're paying like five bucks a month for like a DreamHost CGI account or something. And they give you a really stripped down Apache that gives you like five max child with a max timeout of three seconds or something. And you're trying to do server server okay, communication? So, so, that, so I'm talking about clients. So yeah, so server to server, okay. server no. yeah, HTTP stuff takes like Yeah, yeah. No, if, if you want to do like browser channel, whatever, comment, whatever they're calling yeah. it nowadays, yeah. to um, your browser to the server, yeah, sure, long yeah, pull yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. It's not even, it didn't seem like part of what you were expecting out. No, no, no. no. Um, but, I mean, you saw our demo. We didn't even long pull in our yeah. demo. Like, we, we pulled the shit out of right. our own server because, yeah. you know, whatevs. But, um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, all these things can be integrated. From you know, you can have Bosch and a client getting the same subscription, like same push of this of this data. XMPP clients can actually subscribe to this. You know, I mean, the, the idea is that it's just the, but the 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 key thing is that this is the lowest level of the spec, which is HTTP synchronous server to server, server to server, like totally stupid and brain dead, but it works for pushing PubSub around, and that's like that's all the servers that are out there that people have what they can use. You know, that's for really trivial implementations. So that's that's like the baseline that, that this this solves.
Are you guys thinking about hooking this up to like Atom Pub? Um, you mean the, the the new the new one like the extra verbs and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you totally could do that. I, I think for now it's we're just pulling feeds and right. pushing them through. But yeah, that would be a good. Because I would solve your diff problem. Right. We're having to diff the uh, Atom XML. Right, but then we have to trust the person <laughs> who's publishing. On well, the, th there's an implied trust with server to server. You've already explicitly, you know. Oh yeah, but right now when you publish, we go and pull the feed again. So, oh, okay. so that's how we can trust it because we know we're actually talking to, you know, unless DNS is poison, we know who we're talking to. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, but Adam Pub would be nice if we had that cr those credentials for actual auth authentication and authorization. No, it was nice to see um, the OAuth combined with XMPP stuff because yeah. we were thinking about that too about yeah. um, skipping a lot of our verification bullshit and just using OAuth. Yeah, that'd be cool. So. Uh, oh, the other cool thing is um, the hub can optionally, as a feature, support um, polling. So you could have like 10,000 subscribers. Like, say you have like, say, Slashdot or, you know, whatever, yeah. some legacy Atom feed that doesn't support this protocol. You could have like a hub in the middle that does support polling, and you could have like 10,000 clients all requesting the Slashdot Atom from this thing. Not that it discovered it on the Atom thing, yeah. on the Slashdot Atom, because it never declared, didn't know anything about this. But then this one polls, you know, maybe say every half hour, but then maybe like, because a thousand subscribers are subscribing to the hub, it's like, well, maybe I could be more of a dick and poll every five seconds instead. Hey, I am working on behalf of a thousand people. Um, and then when it gets updated, broadcast it out to a thousand. So, so that's an strap. optional feature that a hub can support. So maybe yeah. like, you know, ISPs or, you know, some big hubs support this. But the really cool thing about that is it's like we have this chicken and the egg problem. Nobody speaks pub sub yet, but people want to get notifications first. That's kind of what they want first. So if we add that, then we can do automatic polling Every atom feed that's on the web can now become a topic. A, a topic that's published, and you can actually get events whether or not people want them. Uh, and as a as a subscriber, you know, like the subscriber example, writing it. I, I mean, mean, you you added mine. Yeah. You added Brad. Yeah, he Brad doesn't. Jim. He doesn't have it. Well, this seems like a, a better way of doing uh, public subscribe for atom endpoints for people who don't want to implement Bosch or XMPP. Sure. Like we're trying to push stuff to to friend feed to get their to get them to notice our changes faster. Uh, but we, you know, if we implemented something like this, then we could have people who aren't friendly still use yeah. the same notification. Exactly. The same yeah. So it's like, yeah, so it's really nice. It just gets everyone invited to the party. And the great thing is the, the hub scales um, horizontally. So yeah. I mean, this one does for free because it's on App Engine. But um, we did the exact, I mean, this is pretty much the exact same implementation that we did for LiveJournal on an internal system we called ESN. Um, where ESN was event subscription and notification, and it was, it was PubSub internally, which is how on LiveJournal, if you go to like watch a topic or whatever, internally it does this exact same protocol just over, and we just kept adding more machines horizontally. So um, any database, MySQL, with this big table or whatever, it'll just be fine. Yeah. Cool. Thanks.